Chances are you're listening to this podcast because you love bringing wedding dreams to life. It's really magical. But getting booked in the first place, well, that's maybe less than magical. Luckily, there's a better way to connect with couples, and that's through Zola, the sponsor of today's episode. Stay tuned to hear more about this incredible opportunity. Hey, everybody, it's Andy Kushner with The Wedding Biz, a podcast that provides both education and inspiration for those of us in or interested in the weddings and event industry. Today's guest, I'm so excited, is a second appearance, uh, and that is master floral designer Kiana Underwood of Tulipina, an internationally renowned floral design studio that specializes in creating bespoke experiences for luxury weddings and events. Kiana has sold out workshops all over the world. Her book, Color Me Floral, covers the secrets to designing show-stopping monochromatic arrangements for each season. Her work can be seen in numerous major publications, and be sure to check out her stunning Instagram feed with 400,000 followers at Tulipina Design. Enjoy this conversation with Kiana Underwood. Kiana, it's been three years. You know, I interviewed you first. It was episode 160 back in June of 2019. Uh, And you had just bought a farm in upstate New York and moved there. And I was just thinking, what great timing in terms of the pandemic hitting earlier the following year. It was perfect for you and your family, I imagine. Absolutely. Yes, it was. Um, It it was, first of all, thanks for having me back again, Andy. But uh, yeah, it's just, we were lucky that we were already living in the countryside when all this COVID stuff happened. And you know, it, if we were already in a remote place where we could ha- sort of just live a normal life as we had been um, with the pandemic and all. So uh, it, it was amazing that we we were able to just be there. Yeah, I'll bet. And I remember, too, during that interview, you mentioned that you had a five-year plan to build your property and you wanted to build a beautiful glass house where you can teach and have photo shoots and cultivate flowers for your own use. Did you end up doing that? Well, I can't say that I could build the glass house because with the pandemic, all of our business, as you are well aware, had to stop because all travel and all weddings and events kind of were done with for at least a year. So we needed to put a stop to all of the spending that we were doing on our property. But we did, um, I did have managed to maintain a beautiful garden that year and actually stay at home to enjoy all of that and we yeah I did a lot of uh, planting and we what we did what we could ourselves Nate built a lot of different pathways for us and just sort of the things that we um, we were able to do on our own yeah well it sounds wonderful and you know also thinking back to that first conversation we talked a lot about pushing past fear and taking risks to get our talent out into the world and Since then, I wonder, have you had any instances where you had to deal with going again outside of your comfort zone in any manner to continue to grow your career, your career or or to get to another place artistically? Absolutely. You know, during um, 2020, as you know, no one was going anywhere. There were no there was no travel happening. And therefore, I think any sort of opportunity for most of us creative people um, was killed for continuing on the path that we had been on. But I still, um, you know, I continued to travel when I could. And I that, that year with um, the pandemic and everything, I still decided that I was going to have a workshop in Lake Como and teach and to be able to actually, um, I don't know, uh, remain creative to a certain extent. And it turned out to be one of the greatest things that I had done. It was one of the most beautiful workshops, actually, that I have ever done. And uh, it was what everybody who attended and myself uh, needed at the time. Did you feel like it was a risk setting it up out there? I mean, did it feel that way when you were doing it? Well, it was a risk because, first of all, uh, people were not traveling. And um, for me, usually... People come from all over the world to attend my workshops and doing that in Como or actually anywhere in the world at the time where people were kind of frozen um, from travel was a risk. It was actually a great risk that nobody would show up. 
but I decided that I was going to do it anyway. And that, you know, there was, there were going to be people who wanted to have, um, still a creative getaway. And it turned out that there were still a lot of Italians who wanted to do that. And so we did. And it was, I mean, it was, it was kind of a nightmare because we had chosen one villa to do it at. And the villa decided that at the very last minute upon my arrival, that they could no longer host it because they didn't want to be put under some heat with, um, you know, everyone who was criticizing each other one way or another for why we were gathering and why we were getting, you know, together during a pandemic. So they pulled out of their promise and I had to, at the very last minute, find a place that would, that I would be able to, um, that was beautiful, first of all, and would be able to host 12 people who were coming um, as long, as well as a lot of the vendors who were coming from France. And so it, it was very stressful. I won't lie, but the results were super beautiful and it was nourishing for my soul and everybody else who attended as well as other vendors who were there you know i think that people in the industry who uh, especially who are listening to this you know assume that those of us who are seem to be really at the top of our careers you know and, and having so much success that I, I think they feel that that you don't really um, go through as much of the human emotions that everyone else does you know I know it's so true, Andy. I mean, I, the number of times I hear from people how lucky I am to work with flowers, number one, and then how lucky I am to be able to work um, in Lake Como. Uh, and I, I believe that I am. I, because I love what I do. I love, I love that I work with flowers and I love that I get to work in Italy and all other places around the world, but that doesn't come without a price. And that to me, it's, you know, it d- didn't just fall into my lap. I went and got it and I went after it and I worked hard for it. And I continue to work hard for every bit of success that I get. See, that's what I think is also uh, a misnomer is that, you know, getting to this level that then you're just there and now you're just flying and soaring. And yes, I'm sure there's plenty of wonderful aspects of of having paid so many dues but but to stay there i mean like i know kiana that for instance in the um you know i'm in music and in the music industry especially at the national level they talk about how you know it's it's an of course it's very hard to get to that point where you have hit songs and you're recognized nationally but it's a whole nother story to stay there right it to stay there so i assume that you still have of course right your own struggles and you come up against fear and risk, I imagine, all the time. Absolutely. And I I mean, honestly, um, getting to a point where you are sort of, quote unquote, on top is one thing. But as you just mentioned, staying on top, I think, um, for me, has to do with being able to reinvent myself um, and um, evolve as an artist, as a businesswoman. And I think that that is probably the hardest part of who I am and what I do, because it's not easy to, it's not easy to stay on top. And it's definitely not easy to reinvent yourself because you have to be creative. You have to, again, work hard and you have to find different alleys for which you can remain uh, relevant because you, you can become stale very quickly. Yeah. Can you put into words how you've had to reinvent yourself maybe even recently? Is that something you can describe? Well, I think every year that I work um, with all of the designs that I do with flowers and I have to be unique and I have to be new every time because I don't believe that repeating one's own work or copying someone else's work is something respectable, at least not for me. I don't want to be that person. And I think in, in order for me to remain new, and excited about what I'm doing, I have to do different work and different designs and evolve each time. And so um, that in and of itself is not easy, but I think it brings the challenge and I thrive on challenge. So that is what um, helps with a beautiful result in the end. And so I think the greatest example is that 
each year I, I do a set, a series of different designs for weddings. And, and I think every wedding is an opportunity for something new and for showcasing that you can reinvent yourself and you can evolve. Yeah. Well, and I remember too, that in terms of what inspires this creativity in you, that you had talked about music and old paintings. Is, is that still how you inspire yourself? I mean, are there any new ways or? Absolutely. I mean, I'm still very much inspired by art. Art, um, uh, you know, uh, architecture, um, the old world, all of that really inspires me. Uh, but I think that I have kind of moved, even though art will forever remain um, a, a basic foundation for how I operate with my designs, I think today I look more at each um, couple. I look more at each uh, venue. Um, I even look at the venues that I have to continue to work at because I find myself working at, for example, the same venue on the lake, maybe 10 times in one season. Right. And that becomes in and of itself a way for me to showcase how each event at the same spot can be different and still interesting. Yeah. There are some big wedding platforms out there that make big promises about all the bookings you'll get if you sign up with them. But is that always the case? With Zola, for a start, there are free listings and no annual fee. You only pay to connect with the couples you desire, and you're not going to get spammed, rather just pre-qualified leads from couples who love what you do and are ready to get more information. You'll even get those credits back if the couple doesn't respond to you. And again, it's free to create your listing. And these are beautiful listings designed to really showcase your business. Getting started is easy. Just go to Zola.com forward slash Andy to create your free listing. That's Z-O-L-A dot com forward slash Andy. They'll even start you off with free connections to make bringing those weddings to life even more magical. Do you have any good stories of, of maybe one or two weddings that you've, uh, you've done your floral design for that you could explain how you came up with the concept? Even one good one would be great to hear. I worked at a beautiful venue in Minnesota. This season, I was hired by a lovely bride who really loves my work and wanted something beautiful and trusted everything that I did. So this gave me the opportunity to create because there was sometimes I work with planners who design things and then, you know, we, we come up together with um, the design. But this was f solely me who had to come up with a design. And this venue was called um, the Aria um, in uh, Minneapolis. And what was cool about it was that it was such a blank slate. It was, while it's this Gothic, older building um, that kind of you could do anything with, but it also gave you gave me such inspiration in different parts of the building. You know, it was an, obviously it's indoors. Um, it was in late fall. The event was so it wasn't like we were going to be outdoors or anything. And so we were reliant upon whatever that was um, inside the building. And I think this bride in particular, with her trust in me and this building, as cool as it was, it was industrial. It was um, old. And it, it is still there, obviously. So it, it's old, it's industrial. It, it gave me the opportunity to create something very unique for that space and for this bride and um, bring in some color, do something that was different, experiment with different flowers and how they would they would last in this environment because usually I'm on the lake or I'm outdoors somewhere making um ceremony spots but this was all inside and also we had one hour to flip that spot from the ceremony to reception which um then was a very interesting challenge and in the end it turned out to be one of my favorite weddings of the year and of course the bride and groom were in love yeah <laughs> That sounds wonderful. And I know Minneapolis is so beautiful with all the lakes and the fall there is a wonderful time to be there. I love Minneapolis. Yeah. Yeah, it was actually lovely. And we did. We did bring in uh, so many different 
fall foliage and the colors were just amazing when once they were brought inside so it it was it, it was very much a favorite event of mine yeah you know also in a little bit of a different direction i know too that you are balancing your career and life with not only you know the business and being married, having a husband. You also have three teenagers. <laughs> yes. How how are you balancing it all? Well, I would have to say I've done many different things in my life and the hardest task I have ever had to juggle has been having children. And at the, at the, at the moment, three teenagers. It, it's, the, it's a nightmare. <laughs> Let's face it. For Let's me. Let's just be real. <laughs> right. Let's be real. It's a nightmare, not only because they're they're all teenagers at the same yeah. time, but also because of what um, the time that we, uh, today's world, what we have to deal with yeah. and the type of th- types of things that we never had to deal with as teenagers. Um, I mean, let's face it, our life was a lot more simple growing up. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I think about that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And so we, with with the social media and the pressure of this constant pressure that you get as a child um, from social media and this constant connection, you are constantly connected. When we were children, we would go to school, but then when we came home, we were home and we were not no longer connected to our friends until the next day. But today my children are constantly connected or being bothered or buzzed by some sort of application on their phones by people and friends. And so I find that to be a very distracting factor in a child's life. And therefore you, us as parents, we have to constantly work on, um, undoing some of this distraction at home and this pressure. And, and, and and honestly, I think, you know, we think that today's children are more mature. They seem that way because they were, they have been taught so many things by the internet, by the simple connectivity from a very early age, but that doesn't mean that they were ready for absorbing all that information so in that sense, while they think they know better, while they think they're mature enough, they really are not. I want to come back in terms of you as an artist. Do you ever, Kiana, is there ever a moment where you feel like stagnant or even burnt out at all? Yes. At the end of this season, I'm still, I'm still burnt out. You know, I ended my season at the end of October, actually the first week of November, and I'm still feeling extremely exhausted mentally, maybe not so much physically, but mentally, because I I did something like, I, I don't know, 25, 26 weddings this season. And the kind of artist that I am, I don't, I want to reinvent. I want to create something new each time. And to do that 26 times, it, it was exhausting. And I, I'm looking forward to some downtime for the next couple of months before I have to tackle a new season again. <laughs> well, but what do you do? Do you have some kind of way of of coming out of that if you get into that kind of a funk? Like what what do you do? I try to disconnect a little bit. I try if I can. I mean, it was very hard to do that this season because we had so many back to back or even overlapping events that it's it was almost impossible to disconnect but I still did I try to take some time just kind of alone um to because you know even when I'm not designing and I I find that as I'm getting busier and as my team is getting larger I don't get the chance to design as much I, by design I mean actually uh, personally create uh, arrangements because projects are getting bigger and there's simply no time for me to do that. So um, the, the creative aspect of it, it is taken away from me when I have to be managing people and producing on a larger scale. But I do try with, I, t- I try to take some time during each event or during the production of each event to at least take one or two pieces that I really love and work on them and um, enjoy the process 
because that's what gives me life. And, um, and I did that this whole season, basically, by trying to stay in touch with the flowers, touching them, designing with, you know, creating arrangements and things like that. And um, that helps me. Do you have a daily way of kind of grounding yourself? Like, like, do you have some kind of a morning routine, an evening routine? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I took a lot of baths. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I know it sounds really silly, but sometimes you just need, um, even if it's 10 minutes of no noise, no one asking you questions, no one needing anything right, from you. Right. And that, that for me, the, the time that I took to take a bath was probably the time that I wasn't bothered by anyone. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I also think sometimes um, just I try to go to the studio early before anybody else is there. Um, I put on my music and I will create an arrangement. And that for me is a great start of the day, especially during the season. Oh my God, what a wonderful way to start the day, given what you do to do that. Yeah, I, I because I find that when I'm in the studio and all my team is there producing, everyone's got a question. Everyone is wondering how they're doing. They want an in, some sort of input from me. So I always try to go to the studio early, during, especially during production, where I can just think and look at all the flowers that I've ordered and figure out how we're going to use everything. and um, and that extra 30, 40 minutes alone really um, gives me life. Yeah, that's wonderful. So last question before we go, what is the next event that you're really excited? I mean, not necessarily the next one, but something coming up in the whatever, the next four to six months that you're really excited about. Well, I think just in general, um, all the new clientele who um, we have signed, uh, they are very exciting. We have um, tried to take on projects that are a little bit more challenging, more interesting, and more, as I've said before, allowing myself to evolve a little bit as a designer. So uh, f with each of those events, I think that is something very exciting for me to look forward to. But I'm also um, doing a workshop in Stockholm. It's my only workshop of the year, really. And so um, I'm excited just to, first of all, go to Sweden. I've never been there. And just to, you know, have this, uh, this, this masterclass um, in, in a different place uh, this year. And already I'm very um, pleased with the reception that I have um, had from all the attendees. When is that masterclass? Um, it's going to be in May, May 2 and 3 of 2023. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, Kiana, it is so good to catch up with you. And I appreciate how you go in depth with me with these interviews uh, and, and get vulnerable about it. And, and I, I just really appreciate it. It's always nice to, it's nice to talk to you again. Thank you, Andy. You as well. Thank you for listening to my conversation with Kiana Underwood. If you enjoyed this episode, please don't keep it to yourself. Be sure to tell a friend. You could check out Kiana's website, which is tulipina.com. On social media, you'll find her on Instagram and Facebook at Tulipina Design. And remember to go to dezola.com forward slash Andy to create your free listing and get your first few connections for free. And I want to mention next week's guest. It's a special conversation talking about the dynamics of a successful partnership. And it's with my own business partner with Kushner Entertainment. And that's Robert Sherman. And finally, be sure to follow us at The Wedding Biz, particularly on Instagram. And we'll catch you next week. <laughs>